Chess might be one of the biggest games of all time. Originally invented to symbolize strategic cavalry and infantry war between nations, there's something magnetic about it, attracting hundreds of millions of players. It has seen many variants across the years, but there's one in particular that many have dreamed of, but it just seemed impossible. What if chess was infinite? This is a game of chess where the board goes on forever. You can see why it seems impossible. I mean, it's kind of hard to build an infinite board in real life. So for the longest time, that was it. Just a dream. Until now. If you haven't seen my first video, I highly recommend watching that. In this video, I'm going to show some positions unique to only infinite chess that are mate in Omega. What does that even mean? Is that the same as mate in infinity? Let's find out. My name is Naviary, and welcome to another video. Okay, what does it mean for a chess position to be mate in Omega? To answer this question, first we need to define what a checkmate clock is. In normal chess, when one side is able to force a win despite the other's best measures to try stopping it, we call it a forced mate. The checkmate clock tells us the longest one side can hold out until they inevitably lose, assuming perfect play, of course. Here's a finite chess position where white has mate in two moves. Pause now if you want to try solving it. Okay, the winning moves for white are queen to h6, black is forced to capture, then bishop f6. Anywhere black tries to move now, they can't prevent capture. They are in checkmate. This position we call mate in two for white because this is the quickest white can force a win. It's worth noting that because of the nature of finite chess, the checkmate clock will always be limited to a finite number, but we'll soon see infinite chess doesn't have this bound. Now let's take it to the infinite board. Look at this position. White is winning, and it's black to move. Now, kind of an inverted puzzle, let's take the role of the losing side, black. Try to figure out what the best move for black is to survive as long as possible. Let's try a few different options. What if we move this left? That ends abruptly, we lost in one move. What about to the right instead? Little bit longer, two moves. In fact, most other moves we make end the same way, with either the queen or rook almost immediately checkmating us. But what if we moved this up against the pawn? Now, after a series of repeated checks from white, we lose after six moves, after we are trapped against our own rook. And that's the longest we can hold out. This position is mate in six for white. But what if we removed this pawn? You may start to get an idea of our dilemma now. What determined how long it took white to checkmate us was how long it took to push our king against our rook. But now, we are unbounded in how far we can move. If we move 100 squares away, checkmate will be in 100 moves. If we move 1 million squares away, checkmate will be in 1 million moves. Yes, it will take a very long time, but white will eventually win. The farther we move the rook in the beginning, the longer we can hold out until the inevitable. So what does the checkmate clock say? We can't put it at a million because, well, black could move to a million plus one. We can't put it at a Google because black could move to a Google plus one. Okay, put it at infinity then. Well, we can't because white will still win after a finite number of moves, just arbitrarily large. Black can't move to literal infinity, they still have to choose a number, or lose on time as they think of a bigger and bigger one. So then, what do we put the checkmate clock as? It has to be bigger than any finite number, but it can't be infinity. Are we stuck? This is where ordinals come in. Ordinal numbers aren't the same as infinity, but they define an order. They show you what number comes next. In our regular day-to-day -day life, most of the time the kind of numbers we use are cardinals, the kind of number that describes an amount. I have eight pawns. But ordinal numbers are different. They don't describe a quantity, but rather a position. Say you compete in a race, and you won third place. The three doesn't mean you are three people, it just means you came in third position. That is an ordinal number. 
My subscriber count is a cardinal number, but subscribing would give you your own unique position among my subscribers, an ordinal number. No pressure. Conveniently, ordinal numbers are just what we need to finish our checkmate clock. The next ordinal that comes after the entire list of integers is omega. In this position, white has mate in omega. Let's look at another example. Here we have an infinite tower of pawns. Okay, it's not actually infinite, but for the sake of this, let's pretend they are. Games with an actual infinite amount of pieces are coming. White again has mate in omega. From the last position, you probably have a good idea of what to do, but for the sake of showing what happens, if we use the rook to capture either of these pawns, white will recapture, proceed to push these pawns, opening up the door for their queens to checkmate. Similar strategy if we move the king. White captures the rook and moves their pawns up to free their queens. Black's best play here is to move the rook up, and they can do so arbitrarily far. The farther black moves their rook, the more pawns white has to push to free their queens. Black again chooses how long the game lasts. For simplification, let's call this move of moving the rook arbitrarily far an announcement of how long black wishes the game to last. In both of these mate and omega positions, black receives exactly one announcement to inform white the bad news of how much longer the game is going to take. Can we go bigger, greater than mate and omega? Yes. The ordinal numbers go on, from omega to omega plus one, omega plus two, all the way to omega times two, omega times three, and forever. In an omega times two position, black would receive two separate distinct announcements in which they could decide how much longer to delay the game. Let's come back to this position, but this time add a rook that can move freely. With this, black gains a lot more torture power. After the initial move and capture, black can move this rook arbitrarily far and proceed to check white repeatedly, seemingly endlessly. White will have no choice but to advance towards the black rook until they are adjacent to it, at which point black can't give another check but has to move farther again, allowing white time to push exactly one pawn. How many times black can repeat this cycle of checks depends on how many pawns white needs to push to free their queens, which itself depends on how far black moved initially. In other words, if each moving farther of the rook is one announcement of how much longer the game will last, on the very first move black gets to decide how many total announcements he wants. A large announcement. Omega times omega. This position is mate in omega squared. Now, mate in omega cubed is a topic for another video. I hope that made some partial sense to you all. It's really fascinating what is possible in infinite chess when compared to normal chess, and it's one of the reasons that initially sparked my interest in it. Let me know in the comments what other type of content you guys would like to see. Huge thank you to my patrons for helping make this possible. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Naviary. Until next time.